the current policies of the government aren't going to do very much to, to help speed the reduction in crime in Canada and that they're focused on, on cracking down and getting tough on crime uh, rather than on enhancing people's public safety. And so what we see from the government has been a, uh, almost a random hodgepodge of, uh, of pieces of legislation uh, that aren't integrated, that aren't focused, and that uh, aren't calculated to do the most that the government could in order to make the average Canadian safer. And so one of the things that I agree with the government on is that crime rates are too high, there's too many Canadians getting victimized, and that the costs of crime are too high. The Department of Justice estimates that crime costs us about $100 billion a year in Canada. And I also agree with them that uh, victims aren't being treated very well in, this, in the justice system. Uh, where I disagree with the government is on what should be done about that. Uh, they haven't really in invested a lot of uh, money in victim support programs, even though they, they say they're on the side of victims. Uh, that hasn't been expressed tangibly in terms of, uh, of investment in programs. But more importantly, they've uh, chosen to tinker with the law and do a bunch of uh, uh, almost random changes to the criminal code rather than addressing the, the problem of crime at its roots and trying to bring in evidence-based strategies that we know will be able to reduce crime in the future in Canada. What the research has shown on, on uh, how to, the best ways to reduce crime is that what we need to focus on is the certainty of sanctions rather than their severity. And to give you an example of, of the difference between those two, uh, as a result of the Jane Krieber shooting in, in downtown Toronto that was so highly publicized, uh, the government brought in in 2006 uh, mandatory minimum sentences that raised the penalties for some gun crimes from four years to five years. I'm not sure why they expected that would make much of a difference. And in fact, what happened for the three years after that was that uh, gun violence actually increased in Canada until 2010 when it started to go down again. If you want to contrast that with an effective program in Boston, uh, they set up the Boston Gun Project, which was a, a project where they uh, followed evidence-based policies and focused on high-rate high offenders. And the result was an almost immediate decline of 63% in gang homicide rates in that part of the city. Uh, they didn't toughen up the law at all. There was no changes in the criminal code in the state of Massachusetts at the time, uh, and yet uh, they were able to uh, come up with a very spectacular success in terms of reducing gun violence. California, as a lot of people know, brought in a very draconian three strikes law where uh, offenders who had a, a third felony violation would go to jail for 25 years. Uh, and uh, that, that law has uh, succeeded in doing things like throwing people in jail uh, for life for stealing a slice of pizza. As a result uh, of that uh, strategy, uh, California prisons are among the most expensive in the world. They're currently under court order to reduce inmates. They have massive over-expenditure problems. Uh, and we can contrast that with the state of New York, where they, in fact, reduced the prison population over the same period of time but because they brought in some innovative law enforcement strategies, their crime rates went down by more than California's. So what we had in New York was uh, fewer crimes and fewer people in prison. Uh, what we had in, in California was also fewer crimes, although not the performance wasn't as good as, as New York's, but we had many, many more people in prison and this huge prison system that really uh, has sucked dry the budget of the state of California and is still, is still doing so. What the government should be doing is focusing on, on making Canada's streets safer rather than on some sort of uh, ideological campaign to, to crack down on crime or to get tough on crime. I think the, the mandate should be to reduce crime so that uh, fewer Canadians are victimized. And uh, the best way to do that is to take an evidence-based approach. And what the evidence tells us we should be doing now is to uh, focus our efforts on, on high crime areas, uh, to improve policing because the focused deterrence and hotspot policing strategies are, are critical to any successful program. And then to, uh, to bring in programs that, uh, such as the one that we're borrowing from Prince Albert 
uh, that will integrate social services so that people who have high needs, and many people in high crime communities do, so that those people with high needs will be <coughs> served in an integrated fashion by, by the various agencies that uh, are supposed to be working with them.